this week we're transitioning from devotional, the devotion network, to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Because what we want to do is bring the personableness of Jesus, the reality of having a intimacy with him to the viewer as well as to sharing those things that are true not just in my life but that are true in yours and in your world that you're affecting because you are the person that God saved you have a destiny that God has chosen for you and you have a personal relationship that Jesus wants you to develop in learning not only about him or experiencing the Holy Spirit, maybe sometime for the first time, or maybe unique and new or different, but to know the Father, to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and of His Father in Heaven, which is God. And a lot of times people say, oh God, and stand way back. But God wants you to know Him intimately as Father. And so, Transitioning this week, we'll be changing things a little bit. And <laughs> I'm, to be honest, part of it, I don't have a clue what the Lord's doing. You know, it's like, it's interesting is that each day as I wake up, God seems to give me a little more of what we're going towards and what we're doing. There'll always be one year's worth of daily night and the devotionals that we're doing. But we're going to gradually expand into something a little bit different a little bit more so, so that when the devotionals are done, that we have shared for one year, and we can repeat them, so to speak, and just posting them, then we'll move on into studies, and the sharing of information that I'm sure you have for me, and I have for you, and God has for both of us to learn together, as we experience what the Lord would do, even as we do it in devotionals today. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. All things are yours, whether the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. All things for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. We all experience challenges in our life that are going to wrestle with our soul, frustrate our emotions, and cause us to re-examine sometimes our faith until we realize and recognize that they're meant to produce fruit in us. They're meant to cause us to grow in some way. Pressure was never meant to be resisted in the sense of, oh, you know, it's not a good thing for me to be under pressure. I need to be always removed from it. But in the world, Jesus told us we would have tribulation, but to be of good cheer because he had overcome the world. The pressures of the world, the constraints that God places upon us, cause us gradually to focus our attention back on him. It causes us to reevaluate what's important and what's not. It requires of us to be in a personal relationship with Him so we might know what we ought to do in every circumstance of life. Because you see, God didn't give us a mind to go off on our own. He gave us a mind to choose the direction we would go. And then He wants us and asks us to participate with Him in going in that direction. To involve Him as we walk with Him as we treat him as the Lord of our life, as opposed to just a savior, and then we do our own thing. The communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, 
whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. When Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him, wasn't just a physical representation, though that can happen. Jesus at any moment could knock on my door and I'd go over, open it. I wouldn't be shocked at all or surprised if he walked in my door and I invited him out here and said, Hey Lord, why don't we just make a video, you and I, and let's let's share with the people what's on your mind, you know, and frankly, I expect that at any moment, at any time. Or there could be a knock at the door and there's Jesus and he says, Follow me and I am zapped walking into heaven and for me it would be looking like at this world you know when I'm stepping out of this dimension as though I disappeared in twinkling of an eye but for me maybe it's the Lord and I walking up a staircase straight into heaven as Jacob's ladder because you see what's recorded in scripture that though we would be caught up into the air and we'd be transformed that can also be stepping out of this dimension. It can, it can mean more than it says there, though it does say what it means, it means what it says. The perception on one end can be different when you're sitting in heaven as opposed to what you see on earth. It's just the way it is. My body could be left behind, and it could be shedding the spirit that's within, and I could wind up being in home with the Lord. But God himself... When he said he would come in, and we use that as a representation of our heart, what that means is that the Holy Spirit comes in. Because, you see, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. They are God. That's all there is. You want to create some theological debate about it? Go ahead. Try to define the Trinity, and you can't. Try to explain it, and you won't. Try to make it into something it is, and it won't be. Because... The fact that you're created means you can't conceive of everything that God is. So, we'll leave it at that. A lot of things we assume about it, and we presume about it, we make doctrines and dogmas and decisions that all are based on our understanding. When Jesus said, lean not in your own understanding, but trust in Him. So, I would rather leave it to God to say, hey, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that's God, because He said so. That's it. Don't need more than that, do we? So, when he said that, that meant that when the Holy Spirit comes inside you, which we know it's the Holy Spirit, because the same words that mean born again can mean born from above. That means that the Holy Spirit comes down and resides in us. Because if he's in us, then we are born again of the Spirit of God. That means that we are of God's nature, of God's literal personage that he has become in us, Jesus in us, alive and well, and we become transformed by that effect of God being in us. We become that temple of the Holy Spirit, that tabernacle of where Jesus himself is when he is seated in the high places at the right hand of the Father in the holy place, because there's a holy place in us if we ask Jesus to come into us, if we ask the Lord to take over our lives, if we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all righteousness, and to be the reality of God in us, Emmanuel, that, wow, the real Lord is living in me? That makes me think of holiness in a new way. That makes me think of my body in a different way. That makes me conceive of the thoughts that maybe maybe I need to quit sinning so much. Maybe I need to stop doing those things that are not profitable to me, but are causing me to turn my attention and focus away from God and reject the world in its ways to accept the Lord in His will for my life. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. If you are lacking in love, you are lacking in the Spirit. If you are lacking in peace, you are lacking in the Spirit of God. If you're lacking in joy, it's from the Spirit of God. Because those are fruits of His Spirit in you. He that is joined unto the Lord is one Spirit. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, who are not your own? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. 
but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Often people make a big deal out of how to pray, what to pray, which to pray, and spiritual prayers and spiritual languages and the gift of tongues and all that. But the reality is that God knows if your heart is true and you care to just share that with the Lord and say, God, help me. God, be with me. God, don't forsake me. Then the Spirit of God will inter interpret that for you and present it before the Father with glowing joy. That you yourselves may not be able to know what it is that you know how to pray or what to pray. But God himself will pray for you. And imagine that. God speaking on your behalf. Even as Jesus said he would. Even as the Spirit said he would. Even as the Father promised they would do. As they present your prayers and you before the Father. Because the day will come when we're told that Jesus will present us before the Father with exceeding joy. Because he will have accomplished by his Spirit all that God intended in you as you were presented faultless before the Father. What a day. What a confidence. What a joy. Because you see, we know, if you're wise, that in us, that is in our flesh, there dwells no good thing. So, in trusting the Lord with all your heart, when you lean on your own understanding, when in all your ways you acknowledge Him, then He is going to direct your path in the way you should go as you learn of Him, as you walk with Him, as you talk with Him today, and as you yield yourself to His Word as you read it in daily life and in the Scriptures. So today, hear His voice. Harden not your heart, but seek after that opportunity to listen carefully for the stillness of the breeze, the quietness of the footstep, the gentle teardrop, the spoken word that Jesus might be speaking to you today, even as you walk in his will, even as you do his will, and as you learn who God is.